खड़े हैं वेल हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन लास्ट क्लास आई नैरेटेड आउटलाइन समरी ऑफ द स्टोरी टू डियर टुडे वी डिस्कस आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू लाइन बाय लाइन द स्टोरी टू डियर is written by leo tolstoy in last class <coughs> i completed i completely narrated the story so we discuss now uh, i'll explain you line by line to dear dear means you know uh, expensive expensive or cost a high cost you can say high cost so dear has two meaning dear means the person uh, who is very close to us is also dear and here too dear means too expensive this is a story uh, written by leo tolstoy so tolstoy is one you know one of the uh, russian novelist and writer uh, who primarily wrote novels and short stories tolstoy is a master of realistic fiction and is widely considered as one of the greatest uh, Uh, world's uh, uh, novelist and is best known for two long novels one is war and peace and another one is anna karenina so this uh, this story ridiculous it ridiculous it mocks the way of punishing a criminal in a country the name of the country is here monaco so let me begin the story then before discussing the story here he uh they ask us to discuss the pre reading activities what do you think would happen if due to procedural procedural lapses or delay the court were convert the verdict of death sentence into life imprisonment so in a, in any procedural uh, in, in a system of giving punishment to criminal if it delays if something goes wrong what happens here so this is a mirror to that this is one of the example if uh, any system a procedural a procedural lapses delays how a death sentence changes into converts into life imprisonment and at the end what happens you know uh, this is an example for that so here uh, near the borders uh, leo tolstoy is depicting uh, or in you know, a mocking i are is ridiculing the way of uh, uh, treating a criminal or uh, you know we can say uh, ridiculing the way of punishing a criminal so near the borders of france and italy here it takes two countries name france and italy near the border of france and italy what happens france and italy on the shore of the mediterranean sea mediterranean sea mediterranean sea so mediterranean is a sea which is connected to atlantic oceans atlantic atlantic ocean so in between this near the borders of france and italy on the shore of mediterranean sea lies a tiny little kingdom called monaco so this is the country name the name of the country is monaco so monaco is situated uh, in between france and italy on the shore of mediterranean sea so there it is situated there it exists many a small country town can boast more inhabitants than this kingdom usually we may not find that country which is having less population than monaco so monaco is one of the tiny a small country and which is having only you know 7000 population many a small country town can boast more inhabitants if you take an instance if you take an example of any country 
which may not be as small as you know monaco so monaco is the smallest country for there are only about 7000 of all told so what is the population of you know monaco it is only 7000 7000 population you can imagine how small country it is only 7000 you know if you take an, any taluka place of uh, no, Karnataka or India, it is just like that, 7,000 population or a, a, a bigger town, you can say, bigger town. So that's what. And if all the land in kingdom were divided, there would not be an acre for each inhabitants. So at the same, we came to know that the population of Monaco is only 7,000. If we divide the land of Monaco, so if we distribute the land of Monaco, each inhabitant, so each inhabitant, you would not get more than an acre. It means to say that even geographical widen, its land is also not more than 7000 acres, that's all. So geographically also it is very small and as well as its population is also just 7000. So and all the land in kingdom were divided, there would not be an acre for each inhabitant. So here we come to know that uh, and as an, a, pop, a man, so uh, a single a person would not get more than one acre of land in that Monaco country. But but in the in this toy kingdom there is a real kinglet and he has a palace and courtiers, ministers and a bishop and generals and an army. So these are the systems we can say are this is, these are systems in a country where you know king to, to be to rule as a real king he must have a palace he is having palace of course courtiers ministers who are working under him uh, there is a system he has courtiers also courtiers and ministers so member of royal officers were there in that kingdom and at the same time ministers were also there and a bishop, you know, the person who does, uh, you know, religious activities and, you know, who institutes religious activities in his presence is a, you know, bishop and generals and an army to look after the people and a, gen a general was there and at the same time an army was also there. So, as if a country must have everything this country had. So, a real, as if a real king uh, have a systematic rule in his in his country in Monaco also this king had with you no know, he had a palace he had courtiers ministers bishop and a general and an army so this is a systematic country uh, where it includes everything so this this country also had these things it's not a large army when you compare when you say army, there will be thousands, you know, lakhs together soldiers will be there. But when, when you take this country, in this country, it's not a large army. This is not having more, you know, more, more you know, soldiers or generals or army people. It's a small. It's not a large army, only 60 men in all. So what is the, you know, strength of the army? Only 60 men. 60 men, but still it is called an army. It's not a large army, only 60 men in all, but still it is an army. You know, it doesn't matter the strength of the soldiers or army people, whether, whether it is uh, the number of 60 or 600 or 6000, it doesn't matter, but still it is called an army. This country is having only 60 men army, but still it is having, it is called, you know, army. There are also taxes in this kingdom as elsewhere. Taxes are very important to run the country or to run the system smoothly. Uh, country must have or the person who is ruling the country, uh, he must have you know, taxes, sources to continue rule or to feed the uh, people in that country. So a tax on, you know, there are also taxes in the kingdom as elsewhere. You know, usually a country will have taxes, sources from which they collect money and they use that money to feed the people or look after the people and where a system you know, continues smoothly, it goes smoothly. So but though, so a tax on tobacco, you now what are the taxes you know, used to collect in this Monaco kingdom, a taxes on tobacco, tobacco, wine, 
टोबैको वाइन स्पिरिट्स स्पिरिट्स एंड ए पॉल टैक्स एंड ए पॉल टैक्स सो दीज आर कॉमन टैक्सेस वी फाइंड इन अ कंट्री टू यू नो टैक्सेस ऑन टोबैको वाइन स्पिरिट्स एंड यू नो पॉल टैक्स पॉल टैक्स इज अ टैक्स वेयर ईच हेड ऑफ और यू नो द टैक्स इज कलेक्टेड ऑन एन इंडिविजुअल इंडिविजुअल ऑफ दैट कंट्री uh head head you know head tax we say them you know the person who is staying that he has to pay the tax to that king that is called poll tax these are the taxes so it may ask uh, in exam one mark question what are the taxes collected by the king of monaco what are they tobacco the taxes they collected on tobacco wine spirits and a poll tax so we came to know these are the taxes he collected Uh, a tax on tobacco and on wine and spirits and a poll tax but though the people there drink and smoke as people do in other countries so people usually do this uh, whenever they you know uh, they they chew tobacco and they smoke they drink and they use they take spirit i know these are the taxes so but though the people there drink and smoke as people do in other countries there are there are so few of them that the prince would have been hard to put it uh, put to it to feed his courtiers and officials and to keep himself he had not found a new special source of source of revenue so here king was not getting sufficient so enough source from these so called you know taxes so he was looking forward is is see another extra you know special source he was looking forward so that so prince was not feeling sufficient he was not getting a sufficient source from these taxes uh, to feed his courtiers ministers and you know system whole system and whereas army people were there and he could not manage with that much money so that what happened then next so if he had not found a new source of a uh, new uh, new and special source of revenue he was expecting another extra uh, more taxes or more source from some other you know revenue so that he was looking for this special revenue comes from a gaming house as i have narrated in the last class he was expecting another source that comes from gaming house gaming house or gambling game he said gaming house so king is he was not feeling sufficient no he was not getting you know he was not uh, collecting more sources so that he was looking for another extra uh, source that that comes from gaming house gaming house or gambling game is gambling game so in this game people play roulette people play roulette and they they try their luck there this special revenue comes from a gaming house where people play roulette people play roulette for more info now words you can just see at the end of the chapter we have glossaries there now meanings of these words are given now see uh, this special revenue comes from gaming house where people play roulette where people try their like you know they play roulette people play and whether they win or lose the keeper always gets a percentage on the turnover so this is obvious no this is true that uh, all the people who are interested the people who come and play a uh, gaming house or gambling game when they play roulette whether they win or lose sometimes they may win and sometimes they may lose but the game keeper always gets the percentage or game keeper always gets benefit from those players and uh, when people you know where we are coming and playing and uh, sometimes they you know won and sometimes they lost but uh, game keeper was getting large sum of that he was you know he was collecting or he was be being benefited from this gaming house people play and whether they win or lose the the keeper always gets a percentage on the turnover and out of his profits he pays a large sum to the prince so the reason why the king of monaco allowed the game keeper to keep this gaming game gaming house or gambling game in that monaco he was getting large sum 
he was getting large income from that you know gaming house where gamekeeper gives large earning so whatever benefits he gets from that gaming house so large sum of that he pays to the king so and out of his profits he pays a large sum to the prince the reason he pays so much is that it is the only such gambling establishment left in europe so it is not that you know the europe countries were not a country uh, people were not at all playing earlier gaming houses they were there in you know in all the european countries before this gaming uh, gaming house uh, they were playing earlier but later what happened so all these uh, uh, european countries strictly they banned this gaming house but only in monaco country this is left so that people were coming from other countries and other you know states to play gaming house and they were playing uh, you know uh, the king of monaco was getting you know, more and more from that gaming house the reason he pays so much is that it is the only such gambling est you know, gambling establishment left in europe in europe country monaco was the alone you know country where uh, where it is allow where it is you know, where it allowed the people to play gaming houses then some of the little uh, german sovereigns used to keep gaming houses for the same kind some of the kings of the europe some of the european countries kings they allowed to play earlier this gaming house but later they banned it they strictly you know forbidden that gaming house because because they learned they knew that what they you see the reason they were stopped was because these gaming houses did so much harm so that is the responsibility uh, that is the duty of the king to look after the welfare of you know well well you know, wellness of his people or his inhabitants so here uh, little uh, uh, german sovereigns they learned that this gaming house so gaming house or gambling game was you know ruining or it was uh, you know uh, doing so much harm to the people of their country so that knowing that they strictly banned that gaming house the reason they were stopped was because these gaming houses did so much harm so that is uh, the well decision good decision uh, taken by the kings of the german because they knew that that was going to ruin or that was going to harm their you know uh, people so that they strictly banned it the reason they were stopped was because these gaming houses did so much harm a man would come and uh, try his luck then he would risk all he had to lose it and then he would even risk money that did not belong to him and lose that too this is what the situation this is uh, the present situation elsewhere dear students where people uh, without putting effort without uh, working hard without sweating they want to earn more and more and more money so how can it possible so that these people not in, in monaco also the same thing happened people were coming from elsewhere to play and try their luck and when whatever the money they had they lost it and uh, they borrowed money from someone and that money also they lost this is what the uh, uh, no uh, situation uh, this is true not only in monaco elsewhere the people would uh, would like to uh, uh, earn money from this way so by playing cards or playing you know Uh, what we say that uh, lottery or you know we say that matka these people are not going to succeed in their life but at the end of their life they come to know that they did you know, they did mistake so here also same thing happened the people who were coming from different parts of the country there to play and they lost their money and the money which did not belong to them that money also they lost so they tried their luck but you know that did not work out a man would come and try his luck and then he would risk all he had lose it and then he would even risk money that did not belong to him that's what uh, that did not belong to him and lose that too and then in despair you know despair he would drown or shoot himself this is what happens when man loses when man loses all the hope of survival when he loses all the confidence hope to live then what happens he feels guilty despair and you know he drown 
Oh, drowning means you know he shoots himself and you know he kill himself. This is what happens when he becomes bare and when he becomes empty handed when all the money is lost and when he you know uh, borrowed money from someone when the money lenders came and asked him money and finding no other way either he has to kill himself or he has to kill the person from whom he asked from whom he took money the same thing happened in monaco also uh, so the germans forbade their rulers to make money in this way all the german kings all the sovereign, little sovereigns of the german they completely forbade it and forbidden it and uh, they did not allow any citizen to earn money in this way they wanted every citizen to earn money by hard work not you know uh, without working hard and you know the, this is not the way to earn money so the germans forbade their rulers to make money in this way but there was no one to stop the prince of monaco and he remained with a monopoly of the business and he is the only person he won't he was not listening anyone and no one could stop the prince of monaco he was having a monopoly of business and he is taking own decision it is his own business no one could stop him in all uh, european country monaco was the only country uh, the uh, prince of the monaco he, he alone running you know he was still running that you know gaming house because he was he was not getting sufficient you know source from uh, taxes so that he was getting more money and he was getting more and more benefit from this gaming house it shows that uh, it doesn't mean that the prince of the monaco doesn't know that it is going to harm the people he knew it but what he is to do uh, he wants more and more source to feed his courtiers ministers and army and everything he has a system to follow so that when he was feeling insufficient money so that he started getting money from this source but there was no one to stop the prince of monaco he remained with a monopoly of the business so he continued without bothering uh, whether it is going to harm them he was not you know thinking about that rather he was looking uh, he was looking towards the benefit which he was getting from this gaming house so next so now everyone wants to gambling uh, everyone wants to gamble goes to monaco now those who want to play gaming house they use it to go to monaco so now everyone who wants to gamble goes to monaco whether they win or lose whether they win or lose the prince gain by it that that's what uh, uh, people whether they win or lose that's not going to you know he's not going to bother but he's getting large sum he was getting complete benefit from that gaming house so here there is a proverb where he believed this strongly the prince of monaco believed this what he says you see you can't earn you can't earn stone palaces you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor by honest labor this is the state this is the statement where the prince of monaco believed it and according to that he started following what he says you see uh, whether they win or lose the prince gains by it you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor what does this statement mean what this proverb mean here you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor we all know that working honestly is so that's what we must work honestly we must be sincere whatever work we do but he he, he thought that that is not right to earn more money he says you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor means the person who wants to earn more and more money he must he, he should not be honest the honest person cannot earn more and more money so constructing palaces stone palaces means constructing you know uh, building you know palaces or you know constructing beautiful bungalows or beautiful you know uh, palaces we must have more and more money so that's what he you no know, uh, we should not be honest to ourselves then the kinglet of monaco no it's a dirty business but what is he to do he has he has to live and he uh, and to draw a revenue from drink and from tobacco is also not a nice thing it doesn't mean you know 
it's not that he was unaware he was not unaware that this is a dirty business still he, he knew that that was a dirty business and even he knew that drawing uh, source from getting source from tobacco wine or you know spirits was also not a nice thing but what he has to do because he has to look after the system he has to feed the courtiers ministers and bishops and an and army people so that he was expecting these kinds of you know uh, illegal we can say this this kinds of uh, you know uh, harmful uh, activities is you know he, he was continuing in, in his kingdom he has to live and to draw a revenue from drink and from tobacco is also not a nice thing so he lives and reigns and rakes in the money and holds his court with all ceremony like a uh, ceremony of a real king so that here king uh, what he has to do he has to live and he has to look after the courtiers ministers and army people and he has to live he has to rule his kingdom like a real king so that he was doing all kinds of this uh, uh, illegal we say that uh, asked all of the activities which are going to harm the people of monaco but he was he was not bothering he was he was showing interest in earning more and more money so uh, we will continue this chapter in next class thank you We continue the story to dear so till now we learned that till now we we have understood that uh, there was a king uh, country called monaco uh, which is situated uh, uh, between france and italy on the seashore of mediterranean sea which is uh, mediterranean sea which is connected to atlantic ocean and there is uh, a kingdom called monaco which is a tiny whereas all is the 7000 population and its geographical widen is also 7000 uh, acres because if we divide the land of that monaco and each inhabitant could not get more than an acre of land so that uh, re there was a real kinglet uh, who wants to rule the country he had a palace courtiers ministers a bishop and an army generals so these are the systems Uh, to run a, a country systematically this country was also having this king was also having that army was not a, a large army but only 60 men were there but still it was called an army so he was also collecting sources from uh, like elsewhere like other countries which they uh, get uh, uh, source from taxes he was also getting sources from tobacco wine spirit and poll tax poll tax is a tax where uh, a tax is collected on an head of the inhabitant the man uh, who is living in that country so but still he was not getting sufficient uh, you know taxes on these so called taxes he was not getting sufficient so that he was looking forward another extra source so that comes from gaming house gaming house or gambling game is a play where people come and play roulette as i said that roulette people uh, come and try their luck sometimes they lose and sometimes they win but the game keeper was getting benefit from that and large sum of that and whatever he was getting benefit and whatever he was uh, getting source and he was uh, giving that source to the king of monaco so that where uh, it's not that other countries were not having earlier uh, european countries were having this kind of gaming houses and later german sovereigns completely they have forbidden this gaming house 
because they knew that this gaming house or gambling game you know, did so much harm to the people of their country. So uh, after learning they stopped that, they completely banned that gaming house but Prince of Monaco was still doing continue, he was continuing it because he was not having extra source to feed his courtiers, ministers, bishops, army people so that uh, to live like a real king he wants more and more sources so that he started that gaming house and no one could stop him because he was a mon he was a having a monopoly of business no one could stop and he was taking his own decision and the king uh, the prince of monaco believed that you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor it means that a person wants to uh, earn money illegally the person wants to earn more and more money and the person who wants to build more, uh, earn stone palaces, he should not be honest. It means to say that one should be dishonest to earn more and more money. So that's what uh, uh, statement, that is the proverb in which uh, the prince of Monaco believed strongly and according to that, you know, he started following. And later what happened, uh, it is not that the king was not aware, the prince of the Monaco was not aware of uh, these things. He was aware, but still uh, to feed his uh, uh, people of country, uh, finding no other ways, he started this gaming house and drawing uh, so, you know, taxes from uh, tobacco, wine, spirit and power tax was also not a nice thing, but to maintain his real uh, uh, leadership or kingship, he wants more and more sources so that he started that gaming house. Next you see, he has his coronation. Coronation is what? Uh, a ceremony of, you know, croning ceremony we say that. We are handing over the uh, power to someone. No, he has his coronation, his levies, he rewards, sentences and pardons. So, so this is what a real uh, king will have in his palace, you know, in his ruling, in his palace. That you know he, he will have coronation ceremony and you know levies, uh, a kind of reception in the beginning of the, uh, at the entry of the uh, palace, reception, rewards, giving you know rewards or felicitating the achievers and you know sentences giving uh, punishment to the criminals or the guilty or uh, uh, the people who commits any mistakes for them he was giving even punishments and pardons and giving excuse and he also has his reviews, councils, laws and courts of justice. This is what he was having reviews or you know criticizing or you know, we say that assessment of criticizing you know uh, reviews council and there was a, a advisory body where it uh, you know count, uh, there was a law and uh, council was also there and laws and courts of justice. Everything uh, which a country, a good country must have, this Monaco country was also having the, these things uh, just like other kings only on a smaller scale. So compared to all other countries, this Monaco is a small, according to that population, they had these systems. There was a coronation, there was coronation, there was reviews, there was uh, you know council, justice, court of justice everything but not in a larger scale but in a smaller scale everything was fine so people were often coming and playing and trying their luck sometimes they were winning and sometimes they were losing everything was going on but still Monaco was a peaceable country it was peaceful country then what happened you see next now it happened a few years ago that a murder was committed in this toy prince's domains so something went wrong there, everything was going on accordingly small, smooth, everything was fine but all of a sudden few years ago what happened, they committed a murder. A murder was committed in this toy prince's domains. Someone committed a murder there. The people of that kingdom are peaceable and such a thing had not happened before. In the history of Monaco, this has not happened before. Earlier, the people of that kingdom, Monaco, were peace, uh, peaceable, they were peacefully leading their life and that did not happen earlier in kingdom of Monaco, but first time a murder was committed. 
the people of that kingdom are peaceable and such a thing had not happened before the judges assembled with much ceremony and tried the case in the most judicial manner so what happened when the murder was committed all the people of that monaco country was speechless they were surprised stunned to know and they were afraid that uh, the, there was no murder committed in the uh, in in monaco before but that was first time happened and when they came to know that there was a murder committed all the judges assembled with much you know ceremony and tried the case in the most judicial manner of course we learned you now just we came to know that there were uh, uh, court and there were lawyers juristers barristers were there jurymen were there and all they assembled together to take a decision to uh, to take a decision there was a, a procedure uh, prosecutors were together and they had an assembly there there was a, a committee the judges assembled with much ceremony and tried the case in the most judicial manner there were judges prosecutors the jurymen barristers they argued and judged and at last they condemned the man condemned the criminal to have his head cut off as the law directs that's what when all when they were together they discussed and uh, there were uh, jurymen barristers prosecutors all sat together and they thought and you know they considered and reconsidered the matter and what the law directed them that they wanted to give they uh, condemned they declared that the the criminal's head has to be cut off that's what the uh, decision they have taken there and the barristers they argued and judged and at last they condemned the criminal to have his head cut off they declared that the man's head the criminal's head has to be cut off that's what that's what the law directs in that country so far so good next they submitted the sentence to the prince the prince read the sentence and confirmed it if the fellow must be executed execute him and whatever the sentence whatever they declare whatever the decision all these uh, jurymen uh, barristers prosecutors have taken and that decision they kept before the prince of monaco and after going through that uh, sentence after going through that uh, decision he too said that if the fellow must be executed execute him i don't have any objection he agreed whatever all these committee members uh, who were assembled in that uh, in that uh, you know case whatever they produced before the king king agreed and tell uh, told them that you know go ahead and if the fellow must be executed execute him that's what king also agreed to the uh, other mem uh, all the committee members who were there there was only one hitch in the matter when uh, all these committee members decided and they declared the sentence that you no know, cutting of the criminal's head and there was a small hitch there was a small problem arose the inconvenience happened there there was only one hitch in the matter that was that they had neither a guillotine for cutting heads off nor an executioner so cutting a head off there they must have a machine called you know guillotine guillotine neither they had guillotine nor an executioner executioner the person who cuts the head off criminal these two they don't have so uh, the monaco kingdom was not having a guillotine a machine a machine which cuts the head of criminal and an expert executioner an expert who could cut the head of criminal uh, that uh, the, that the that they had neither a guillotine for a cutting heads off nor an executioner they were not having this the ministers considered the matter and decided to address an inquiry inquiry to the french government as we have already uh, came to know we have already come to know that this monaco lies between france and italy and after coming to know that they were not having a machine and an expert to, uh, expert to cut the head of criminal what could be done then and they again considered and reconsidered the matter and again what they have done you see and uh, then the ministers considered the matter and decided to address an inquiry 
to the French government. So they wanted to send a letter to the French government asking their favor whether they could supply uh, a machine and an expert to cut the criminal's head. So that's what. French government asking whether the French could not lend them a machine and an expert to cut off the criminal's head. So they decided, all the committee members decided that and they wanted to write a letter to the government, uh, government of France or French government asking their favor whether they could supply a machine and an expert to cut the criminal's head. And if so, would the French kindly inform them what it would cost? And even they knew that the French government is not give uh, it, it may not uh, do it, its favor with uh, free freely they won't you know offer them freely they won't give them a machine and an expert and they were uh, even they asked them that what would be the cost if they are ready to send a machine and an expert what would its cost and would the French kindly inform them what it would cost the letter was sent a, a week later the reply came a machine and an expert could be supplied and the cost would be 16,000 francs. So this is what, when they wrote letter to the French government, French government of course it was ready, it was happy indeed, they were ready to send an expert as well as a machine but they said that they were going to charge 16,000 francs. So francs means a unit of currency in France. So they were ready to supply machine as well as an executioner or the expert but they were going to charge 16,000 francs. A week later the reply came a machine and an expert could be supplied and the cost would be 16,000 francs. This was laid before the king, he thought it over 16,000 francs, is, no, he astonished. He really surprised him to know that 16,000 francs to kill the head of this criminal, sorry, to cut the head of this criminal. No, he astonished. He thought it over 16,000 francs. There, the wretch is not worth the money. No, he got angry on this criminal. No, first in the first place, he committed a mis, you know, he committed a crime, and you know he has murdered. And for we have to spend 16,000 francs on a criminal. So he he was not ready to stand on that. The wretch is not worth the money, said he, can't it be done somehow cheaper? So he asked, so he advised the, all the committee members to find somehow cheap, a cheaper way to find out, to punish this criminal. The wretch is not worth the money and said he, can't it be done somehow cheaper? So he asked them to find some cheaper way. Why 16,000 francs is more than 2 francs uh, ahead on the whole population? This is what 16,000 francs was not a, a small amount either because uh, each inhabitant of that country has to pay 2-2 two, two francs. So when he starts, you know, collect, you know, as we have already come to know that poll tax, collecting taxes from the individual of that country, so it will be more than 2 francs on a single person. So that that's, uh, that's highly, uh, that, that may not happen. Why 16,000 francs is more than 2 francs? On a head whole population, the people won't stand and it may cause a riot. So that's what people may not agree. So people may, you know, there may be a riot. Riot means we said that a, a violent, violent or disturbance. People may not stand the decision which we take. People may not agree to pay one or two to France and there may, there, may, there may be a riot, people may get angry, people uh, may create violence unnecessarily, there will be a disturbance of the peace of the kingdom, so that better we find some cheaper way to deal this rascal, you know he, he got angry, now he said that this wretch and next he says that he, you know, he gets he completely, he was, he was getting angry on this criminal, so again what happened? And uh, the decision was given by the committee members that this man's head should be cut off. Uh, there was a small hitch. There was a problem that uh, the country neither was having a guillotine or, um, or a machine which could cut the criminal's head, nor an executioner who could cut the who could cut the criminal's head. And finding no other ways, they sent a letter to 
a French government asking their favor whether they could supply a machine and an expert to cut the head of criminal. Of course, they said they were ready to send, but the cost would be 16,000 francs. So, King was not agreed to this by saying that uh, each inhabitant will have more than 2 francs and people may not stand on that, that so that people may get riot. Now, there will be a riot. People may get disturbance and there will be disturbance of peace in our kingdom. So what could be done next? Then what happened you see? So a council was called to consider what could be done. Again there was, see there will be committee after committee. Uh, number of you know, committees will, committees held in that Monaco country to deal or to punish this you know, criminal. So a council was called to consider what could be done next. And it was decided to send a similar inquiry to the king of Italy. So they sent first letter to the France government, French government asking their favor. Next they want to send the same letter to the, the country, you know, Italy, you know, Italy. Then the king of Italy. Send a similar inquiry to uh, the king of Italy. The French government is republican and has no proper respect for king. So whereas uh, France, the French government was not having kingship. You know, it was not having king rule. Rather, there was a republican rule. So there was a, it was a republican country. Obviously, it may not show. It will not give proper respect to the king. So that we we send similar letter to the king of you know Italy. That's what. And has no proper respect for king. But the king of Italy was a brother monarch. So brother monarch. So. Uh, how uh, Monaco is same Italy country is also same here the king of Italy show his he may show more interest to support uh, no, to support us king of Italy was a brother monarch and might be induced and uh, might be induced to do the king uh, to do the thing cheaper so the letter was written and prompt reply was received and the same letter they wrote to the king of Italy asking their favor whether the king was ready to send them machine and an expert and they sent the letter and reply well, you know, they received a reply from you know king of Italy the Italian government wrote that they would have pleasure they would have pleasure in supplying both a machine and an expert and the whole cost would be 12,000 francs see whereas French government was expecting you know 16,000 francs but Italian sorry Italy the king of Italy Italian king you know he expected 12,000 francs no, he, they were indeed they were happy to send a machine and an expert but they were going to charge 12,000 francs, uh, 4,000 francs lesser than France, 4,000 francs lesser than French government, then what are producing? And the whole cost would be 12,000 francs, including traveling expenses. Uh, whereas French government expected 16,000 francs, but Italian government was expecting 12,000 francs, including traveling expenses. So that's what they said. This was cheaper, but still it seemed too much. Only 4,000 uh, francs lesser than uh, French government what it expected, and uh, but still it looks uh, compared to France uh, French government it is less, but still it is too much. This was cheaper, but still it seemed too much. The rascal was really not worth the money. You no, know, he got angry. You know, you know rascal means a mischievous. He was you know he got angry on him. You know, the rascal was really not worth the money, it would still mean really 2 francs more per head on the taxes. And again we have to collect this money from uh, the people of Monaco, people may not stand on this, so that better we change the decision now again. The rascal was really not uh, not worth the money, it would be still, it would still more, still mean nearly more francs uh, two more uh, two francs more per head on the taxes another council was called they discussed and considered how it could be done with less expense could not one of the uh, could not one of the soldiers perhaps be got to do it in a rough and homely fashion next thought uh, next they decided when uh, they were uh, when the prince of the monaco was not ready to 
स्पेंड मनी इधर 16,000 फ्रैंक्स और 12,000 फ्रैंक्स देन व्हाट कुड बी डन नेक्स्ट एंड देव बाय हु कार कुड दे दे हैव टू गिव पनिशमेंट टू दिस क्रिमिनल बिकॉज़ नो वन शुड फॉलो द क्रिमिनल सो देन व्हाट हैपेन वन ऑफ द मिनिस्टर्स एडवाइजर दैट व्हाई डोंट वी आस्क वन ऑफ द सोल्जर्स इन आर्मी to cut the head of criminal in a in a homely fashion or in a rough or homely homely fashion that's what they uh, next they wanted to discuss the general was called and was asked can't you find us a soldier who would cut the man's head off so there was a head of uh, officer of an op army officer general was someone and he was called and he was asked that can't you find us a soldier who could cut the man's head off and they asked that man and uh, they wanted to know that whether some any soldier was ready to cut off the criminal's head in war they don't mind killing people and in fact uh, all the soldiers duty is to fight or the kill enemies uh, then uh, they don't mind killing people in war and uh, is there any soldier who could cut the man's head off who could uh, cut the man's head off then in war they don't mind killing people in fact that is what they are trained for so the general talk it over with the soldiers to see whether one of them would undertake the job again the soldier uh, the general went back to uh, all the army uh, soldiers and he discussed with them and he talked to them whether someone is ready to do this job which which was going to be assigned by the prince of monaco and what happens you see whether one of them would undertake the job but none of the soldiers would do it and no they said we don't know how to do it it's not a thing we have been taught so they clearly said it so we have not been taught how to cut the head of criminal but we have been trained that how to fight how to kill our enemies in the battlefield but we have not been trained how to kill the head of criminal so none of the soldiers came forward to cut the head of criminal and they clearly said that we have not been taught how to cut the head of criminal so they were not agree in uh, we will continue in next class what happens